Hello, students of science. We are going to talk about cell energy, so you've got to have energy for it, specifically ATP, photosynthesis, and cellular respiration. We're going to kind of put them all in together. All right, let's start by talking about ATP. ATP is the energy currency of our cells, and I think of currency like money. You want to buy stuff, you want to do stuff, you need ATP. Without it, you're kind of dead in the water. Well, what is ATP? Well, let's kind of draw it out. This is something you should have in your notes. ATP, you start with this little thing called adenosine, or a couple molecules put together, and then there's a phosphate attached to it. Now, ATP actually stands for adenosine triphosphate. And based on that word tri right there, that should tell you I'm looking for one, two, three phosphates. So, you will see that I have adenosine with three phosphates. But, I want you to notice something on here. These phosphates right here are kind of whittling. They're whittling because I have a high energy bond, something that if you break it, energy will be released. So let's take a look at what happens when I actually do that. So here's my ATP molecule there, and if I take that bond right there and it is broken, I still have that phosphate, it's gonna pop off, but importantly here, I've got energy that was released. So instead of ATP, this is now ADP, which stands for adenosine diphosphate. So ATP became ADP plus an inorganic phosphate. Now you can also take that ADP, and this doesn't always happen, but that can be further discharged. Again, break that high energy bond there and pop. Off comes that phosphate, energy is released, and instead of ADP it is now AMP, adenosine monophosphate, mono meaning one. Tri means three, di means two, mono means one. So ATP releases energy, it becomes ADP, releases energy, and becomes AMP. And this way right here, ATP is kind of like a rechargeable battery. It gives off energy when you need, but you actually can recharge it through this process. Here's my ADP, the one that's discharged, and there's that phosphate. Now, it is possible to add in energy and sort of squish that thing back on there and create that high energy bond, and it goes from ADP back to ATP. So this is to say it is a rechargeable battery. It gives off energy, but you can store energy back in there. This is key. ATP is the key to everything here. All right, let's look at the big picture. And in this case right here, I'm gonna kind of do this backwards. I'm gonna kind of go small picture to big picture. Eventually we'll get big picture to small picture, and eventually we'll take it all full circle. But let's start by talking about what every cell needs. Every cell needs ATP. ATP is the rechargeable batteries. Imagine if every single appliance in your house ran off rechargeable batteries. If you ran out of them, that would suck. And in the case of cell phones and other electronic devices, they do use rechargeable batteries. And when they run out of energy, it sucks. So every cell needs ATP, that rechargeable battery. And I also like to think of it as like money. You know, it, it cell has to spend to do anything. You can't just exist and not have to spend money. Everyone's got to spend money on something. So ATP is key. So to get it, you need to do the process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration starts with C6H12O6, better known as glucose, a type of sugar, since it ends O-S-E. Think of this as like gasoline. It's energy that's stored. What does gasoline do? Well, it stores energy. And you put it in a car or you know another motor, and it's going to burn that to produce energy. That's how a car actually gets uh, from point A to point B. It burns that gasoline. We burn glucose in order to make ATP. Well, that raises the question, where did we get the glucose from? Well, we didn't make it. You did not make that glucose. You got it from a plant. And I don't care if you're like, oh, Mr. Carlson, I don't, I only eat animals. Shut up. You ate a plant indirectly. You ate something that ate something that ate a plant. Or something that ate something that ate something that ate something that ate a plant. I guarantee it ate a plant. And that plant performs photosynthesis, where it takes the energy uh, from light and it's going to convert that into glucose. Hey, there's our old pal right there. When you are eating food, you are getting the glucose that was made by some plant somewhere on down the line right there. It took the energy from light and made glucose. You came on and ate that glucose. Now, let's look at it this way. This is a huge misconception. Plants don't just do photosynthesis. Plants do all of this. They perform photosynthesis and make the food, but they also perform respiration and kind of eat the food that they just made. They need ATP as well. Every cell 
needs ATP. Where do we come in? Well, we are not a plant, unless you are a plant who is listening to this, in which case, greetings. Hi, plant. It's kind of weird. Maybe this is something out of, like, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Hi, Audrey, too. It's an obscure reference. You'll get it later. In any case, right there, you are most likely an animal who is uh, listening to this right now. You ate that glucose. That glucose gets burned inside your body to make ATP. Plants made the glucose. You burned it. This is kind of the big picture. You absolutely, positively have to know all this stuff right here. If this is all you know, well, that, that's that's... That's okay. I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, obviously you should know more, but you should start by absolutely knowing this. Write this down. Memorize it. Um, I'm not. I'm not really in favor of tattoos, but this would make a pretty awesome tattoo. I will give you. No, no, I'm not gonna offer candy to get this as a tattoo. But either way, when you turn 18, it, you know, tattoo possibility, something to think about. Again, we cannot get past this. Energy in the form of ATP is the reason all of this happens. Why do we learn about photosynthesis? Why do we learn about respiration? It's about ATP. It's like money. Why do people do jobs? They do it for money. Sometimes lots of money, sometimes not so much money, but they're doing it for money. In the case, cells are doing everything to make ATP. All right, let's talk specifically about photosynthesis. Simplified, it's you take white energy, well, not you, you're not a plant, but white energy gets converted into glucose. Just remember that. Photosynthesis, the main thing, is you take light and you make it into glucose. Remember, glucose is like our gasoline. Now, the full equation here, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but you can't get past the fact, and you should never ignore the fact or forget it, it's still about taking light energy and turning it into that fuel source, that glucose. Photosynthesis also has to have carbon dioxide, <sighs> stuff you're breathing out right now, plants are going to be using that, and water. This is why it's generally recommended that you water a plant. Um, even a cactus does need water occasionally. But in any case, photosynthesis, light plus carbon dioxide plus water, is going to make sugar, which we knew already, and oxygen. Oxygen is a byproduct. Plants are not making oxygen for your benefit. It's nice that they are because you kind of need it, but they're not doing it out of the goodness of their plant hearts. Plants don't have hearts. Please don't, please don't trust me on that. It's just a byproduct. Really, all they're trying to do is make glucose. And where does this take place? In the chloroplast of every plant cell, or every plant cell that has a chloroplast. Roots obviously don't have chloroplast. They don't do a lot of photosynthesis down there, but if it's not a plant cell and it's not chloroplasts, photosynthesis is happening. All right, here's the equations I have right. Uh, the equation I have right here, photosynthesis, the same top and bottom, but I want to show you how it gets changed into cellular respiration. So, if you remember back when we were talking about enzymes and substrates and products and reactants, reactants is what you start with. Products are what you end with. So in the case of photosynthesis, what I start with is light, CO2, and water, and what I end with is oxygen and glucose. Now let's take a look at this bottom equation here and how to change that into respiration. So to change it to respiration, I'm switching that arrow, and I change that energy in the form of light into energy in the form of ATP. Here's my reactants, what I start with, and my products are, entered, are ATP, CO2, and water. That was a really awesome animation that I spent a lot of time working on, so we're going to show it one more time. To change photosynthesis into respiration, I just turn that arrow, and I take away light and turn it into ATP. Now I have the respiration equation. You absolutely need to know these both. But if all you remember is you just got to flip the arrow and change light into ATP, when you know one, you know them both. Let's talk a little bit more about respiration. Simplified, as I just said, you take glucose and you turn it into ATP. Remember, glucose is like our fuel source and ATP is like our rechargeable battery that we talked about at the beginning. The full equation for respiration, as you already saw, still doesn't change the fact that I start with glucose, my fuel source, and I turn it into ATP where I use all my, you know, usable stuff, like the rechargeable battery. You need glucose and oxygen. This is why you're probably breathing in oxygen. If you're not breathing in oxygen, you're dead, in which case the test will not apply to you. But I'm also producing CO2, 
and water. Your body is, of course, going to reuse that water, so it's not like you're like, oh, I'll provide my own water. No, you'll still dehydrate, but water is produced. And this takes place in the mitochondria of all eukaryotes. Just a quick reminder, a eukaryote is something with a nucleus, contrasted with a prokaryote, which has no nucleus. And once again, this does include plants. Huge misconception. People think photosynthesis plants, respiration animals. No! Photosynthesis plants, yes, respiration, plants and animals, and fungi, and protists, everything that has a nucleus performs respiration, including plants. All right, going back to the big picture. Now we're going to go big picture to small picture. We're going to take a full circle. Remember, photosynthesis, plants do. They take light and they make glucose. Remember, that is our fuel source, it's like gasoline. We come in with cellular respiration. All eukaryotes perform this, including plants. They're always neglected and forgotten. And we eat their food. They also eat their food, but sometimes we come along and greedily yank them out of the ground and eat them. We take that glucose and we burn it because it's kind of like gasoline. And they, of course, obviously burn it too. And we're going to make ATP. Remember, this is the reason this all happens. It's all about making ATP. I hope the slow, deliberate way I'm talking is a good clue that you should know this. Know this stuff. Every cell has to have ATP. It's like the rechargeable batteries. It's like money. Everyone's got to have money. It's important. That's why they call it money. Anyways, know this. Tattoo it, maybe, when you turn 18. Or maybe, you know, just know it. You shouldn't have to tattoo it. It would make an awesome tattoo.